Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. So, uh, many of you are already, you, you know who I am. Um, I'm Dolomite. I used to run Freak Nick for more years than I care to remember. Seven, eight, something like that. So, um, it was started by um, a few other people. Um, Johnny X and Decius, who's got a talk uh, tomorrow. Uh, his drunken rant is always part of Freak Nick. Uh, Maverick and a couple other people. And um, starting in Freak Nick 6, I took over and ran it through 12. Yeah, through 12. Um, and part of what happened in the process of taking over it is we actually formed a nonprofit corporation. Um, and part of being a nonprofit is that you need to provide some kind of a benefit to the community. And so I'd been talking about, you know, how can we actually help? And, and we've kind of struggled as to what we do. And we, we've taken donations and given them to other 501c3s in the past. But, you know, what can we as a community do to actually help other people directly and have it germane to who we are and to what we do? And, you know, we are a bunch of people who love to tear things apart, figure out how they work, and put them back together, and maybe not necessarily the same way that we found them originally. We like to fix things that weren't necessarily broken, but didn't work the way that we wanted them to. Well, when I moved to Knoxville, I started looking in the paper um, and, and the online version, and they had an article about the East Tennessee Technology Access Center and the toy techs. And we have one of the toy techs here. His name is Alan, and he's going to be part of this presentation. And what they do is they take toys and they modify them to make them more accessible for, um, and, and we'll just, for the sake of this discussion, just talk about children, children who have accessibility issues. Let's say maybe they're blind, and so there's a toy that has all these colorful lights that go off, but if they're blind, they can't see it. So maybe they translate the lights into sounds, and now that toy has value to the child that doesn't have vision. Or maybe there's something for, uh, that's a toy that makes lots of sounds, and they're deaf and they can translate that into lights. Or maybe there's something that requires that they hit a button that's really small, and they have issues, maybe they have early onset arthritis, or they have some other kind of accessibility issue that keeps them being able to push the buttons. So they make a big button. And the big button makes them enjoy that toy as much as anybody else. And let me tell you, this tugged at my heartstring. I'm like, man, it sucks, it sucks. You've already been dealt, you know, some pretty rough cards in life, and you can't even enjoy a toy. And this is something we can help people with. We can get together with these technology access centers, and there is a network of tax. And is it nationwide? It's you're going to tell us how to how to how to plug into these tax, right? Okay. So we're going to plug into these tax, and I challenge you to donate some of your time. Go in and help hack these toys. They need people who can do the work, and they need toys. But, you know, anybody can donate money. Anybody can donate toys. But to donate your time to actually modify these things to make them usable for kids, that's, that's real value right there. So I'm going to hand this over to Kim, Alan, Evan, and Kim. Don't get the Kims mixed up. <clears throat> And they're going to talk to us about what they do and how we can get involved. All right. Looks like I'm going to go first. Uh, my name is Evan Espy, and I'm with the Technology Access Center uh, in Nashville. We're located off of I-24 at Harding Place for you local yokels. We, uh, as he said, we are a nonprofit organization. We are a staff of six. We serve individuals with all disabilities, all ages, uh, obviously children, all the way through senior citizens. Uh, our adapting program, adapt, toy adaptation program is obviously quite large and one of our main staples. We adapt these toys and have a library so that families and therapists like physical therapists and occupational therapists can come borrow these toys and use with their children. 
and their students. Uh, we also adapt toys for families for free and then adapt toys for therapists if they want to have their own little toy loan library. So as he said, we are all, always looking for volunteers. So if you come and come up and try this uh, in the other room and really are interested in this is your uh, geographical area where you're from, uh, sign up with us. I'm sure Alan can get you in touch with the East Tennessee Technology Access Center in Knoxville. But uh, a little bit more about TAC is uh, we do a wide range of assistive technology. What is assistive technology? Assistive technology is any piece of equipment or device that promotes or allows an individual to do the task at hand despite their disability. For example, one of our other mainstays is computer access. We do a great deal of uh, screen reading software for individuals who are blind, voice activated typing software for quadriplegics or individuals who are blind uh, or have other impairments, um, low vision aids, we have magnification, closed circuit televisions to magnify print, uh, communication devices for both children and adults who don't have the ability to speak verbally. Uh, they can use a device that will speak electronically through the use of pictures and words by putting together statements and that sort of thing and can, can make complete presentations. Kim actually has a very good friend of hers. She can tell you some very cool stories about making presentations through augmentative and alternative communication devices. Um, let's see, what else am I missing? ALS, uh, Vanderbilt University has a um, ALS clinic. Kim Lilly goes there each month and helps individuals who've been diagnosed with ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease find ways to keep their independence as long as they can from anything from obviously again computer access to eating aids to dressing aids, um, you know, any kind of cuffs to hold on to things, remote controls, that sort of thing. So that's kind of the basic and the just the surface really because assistive technology, as I said, it can be any device or product and it can be obviously advanced technology or it can be just something very basic. We have what's called jigs in our center that have been handmade by like folks like Kim and Kim who are two of our consultants in the office. We had a gentleman who was going to be a ticket taker at the movie theater. He only had use of one hand. So what he was doing was ripping the ticket off with his mouth and then handing customers back a what ticket stuff? Obviously, not the most ideal. So one of our consultants took a cigar box, put a slit in it, put a razor blade up from the inside up. So all you had to do was swipe the ticket and give the ticket stuff back to the individual. So something very basic like that that costs just a few dollars, and uh, someone's able to be employed. So that's the beauty and the remarkable thing about assistive technology. Uh, anything I'm forgetting, guys? As I'm coming off election day and. Yes, we are one of five centers in the state. Um, obviously, East Tennessee Technology Access Center being another one. They are also in Memphis, Jackson, and Chattanooga, and then, of course, Nashville. And then we, there are several uh, countrywide, uh, all the way throughout the U.S., and there's even some internationally. I do have a few handouts here for individuals that are interested. I br I, we printed off the southeast region, um, so if you want some contact information for your local center if you live in the southeast, chances are we may have it here. Um, and if not, I have a sign-in sheet. You can sign up here and just put in uh, on the line that says, I'd like more information about. Tell us which state you're in, and we'll help to see if there's a center in your state r remotely close to where you live that you can maybe get tied into and volunteer with. I'd just like to add that... Um the solutions that we find or look for run the gamut from extremely sophisticated to extremely simple. My particular interest is in uh, simple solutions, low-tech solutions to uh, people with mobility problems. And uh, to give you an example, we had somebody who wanted to live in, in their home and um, they had a stove with the controls on the far side of the burners. Well, they would burn their hands when they tried to turn the stove off because they were in a wheelchair and tried to reach across the burners to turn it off. Somebody came up with a solution to take a long wire, put a loop in it, and made a long handle so they could just turn the, turn the knob from their wheelchair without burning themselves. It was a 50 cent solution and it gave them a whole lot more independence and let them stay in their house. Absolutely. Kim Lilly, can you hook me up when we get back to Nashville with 
the, bur the burner, no, Turner, that's awesome. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, that, that's right, that's right. If you only knew, I'm just kidding. Uh, the Kims are gonna show you uh, kind of the end product of toy adaptation, but while they're kind of getting themselves together, anybody have any particular questions or anything? I'm much better at like answering direct questions. I'm always worried about, you always have that one thing you're worried about and then the guy never covers it. The Atlanta area. Georgia Tech University actually has a center. There's. Yeah, yes. Besides that, there is another organization called Volunteers for Medical Engineering that uh, do the same kind of thing. They had been in Knoxville, and we disbanded, and that's why I'm at PTAC. Uh, real quickly, the southeast region that I printed off looks like Alabama, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, of course, Tennessee, Kentucky, and yeah, that'd be it. But this list may also be a little dated, and of course, you never know what's small and just not been, you know, picked up yet, that sort of thing, but yet they still do great work. So. Turn it over to the kids. just an example of one of the toys that we adapted. Um, normally you'd have to come and press one of the other buttons. Some of the kids we work with wouldn't be able to press those small buttons, so we've adapted it. There's a jack back here that you can see plugged in, and that way it's ready for any switch the child might need to use, or an adult for an, another sort of activity later. So if he presses that switch, there you go, good. So there goes the toy. So using that instead of, you know, another button that you would normally have to press on the toy. You're Vanna. <laughs> and then here's just another one. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Right. Yes. The only thing he may be able to move is one hand or his right. Yeah. And we, he can press the switch for his job. Yeah. We actually have a gentleman who is on our board of directors who uses a switch like this. Um, the only body part that he can control consistently is his chin. So he actually has a head a headset that is that has one of these attached and so when he, he when he runs his computer which is also his communication device he basically moves his chin into the switch and uh, it will scan through and you know he's web developing he's got a master's degree so all this stuff's help him get jobs move through college this tiny little switch <laughs> Yeah, we've got um, two kind of different types of toys. Um, sometimes they're really the simple ones. Um, so in this case, K2 has one of the plush ones. So anytime you have a toy that you can feel like the button, like in the hand or the foot or the ear, and where you can actually feel the wires running from that little button back toward the center, those are gonna be the simplest type of toys that we can adapt because you can feel the, wi the wires right inside that you're gonna tap into. Anytime we do more like a hard plastic toy or maybe a plush that has something in the button, or it, you feel like the hard body. Um, we're usually looking at potentially having to solder right on the circuit board or you know, find your solder points, that sort of thing. So from the easy to the more complex, you don't always know what you're getting into um, until you open the toy up. But we'll tackle just about whatever. Yes, it can be. Um, like we had to go out and buy like, you know, find like triangle screwdrivers. Sometimes you kind of have to rig stuff up. So that does become a challenge. Um, sometimes getting into them is sometimes harder than actually adapting it. So 
Yes, they are. And sometimes you unscrew them and they, they're still glued or they have like these little plastic tabs on the inside where they don't want to pop apart. So you kind of have to pry them and, and hope you don't break it in the process. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> We did actually last year have an Elmo guitar that a woman w brought in. We opened it up, quit working as soon as we opened it up. We said, well, this must be a fluke. You'll need to take it back. You know, so we put it back together, put it back in the box. She took it back, returned it, exchanged it for another one, brought it back in. Same exact thing. So we're like, oh, sorry, we can't adapt this one. <laughs> if it doesn't work when we open it, we can't adapt it. So. Yeah, well, I think we're going to move the actual adapting to the um, bar slash restaurant area so to have where the rest of the games are and that sort of thing so if you're interested come on down uh, the Kims will be down there leading instruction and I'll be I'll make my way down there as well to answer any questions and I, can, I know the general basics of toy adapting so but okay if anybody has their own toys that you brought awesome otherwise we have about a half a dozen or so toys that we have so um, definitely if you're interested come Take a look, learn how to do it, and then if you're local and you want to help us out, we'll be looking for volunteers. Anybody who is participating in the scavenger hunt, if you take a look, the very first item, you can get four times as many points as anything else if you donate a toy. You do not have to donate a toy by right now. You have to donate a toy before the end of the conference. So almost every scavenger hunt item is worth about five points. But if you donate a toy, you get 20 points for the scavenger hunt. So it puts you in a huge advantage. There is a Toys R Us across the street. <laughs> it does not have to be an expensive toy. It just needs to be a toy that we can play. There's a Walmart caddy cornered from us. There's a Toys R Us. And somewhere in Murfreesboro, I'm sure there's a Big Lots. So, and there's a Target over next to the Toys R Us as well. There are lots of places. There's a Sam's Club. There are lots of places where you can go and get a toy. And I would love to encourage as many people as possible to get involved. Not just this weekend, but in the future. Kim? Um, on the toy list, we do have marked where we've found uh, specific toys we know we can adapt or look very adaptable at Target, Walmart, and Toys R Us. So they are already marked on there to make it easy for you. It's on the website. Yeah, it's on the website. There's, uh, yeah, there's a link. And by no means is that like an exclusive list of the only thing that's adaptable. It's just a list of some of the things that we had done recently that, you know, we knew were available. So um, if interested, you know, that's a good way to go um, if you would take a look. We are just for the evening, yes. Is, is there a list on your website of toys that, like the guitar, the Elmo guitar? That, that is a, a work in progress that we've discussed because there have been several things that don't work well. Like as a general rule, you know, things that don't have a lot of buttons on them are good because if you have a child that maybe can only access one or two switches and if the toy has ten buttons on it, even if we adapt it, we're only going to adapt one or two things. So not a ton of buttons or at least have one or two buttons on there that do a lot of the toys. Um, some of the new things that are coming out by, like, LeapPad, LeapFrog, have a completely flat surface on them. We haven't dove into those, but there's probably not room for us to get on the circuit board without messing that up. So, haven't looked into those, but probably not recommended, you know, at this point. But. All right. So why don't we delay the next talk for a half an hour since we've already already been a half hour off and take that to the Let's do that. hang out. Let's do that. All right. All right.